Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, inform you about Neo Metals and what we're up to. Essentially, we're uh, trying to build a baby blue chip mining company. Listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, I think, I guess, you know, who we are, we are project developers of industrial mineral products. Uh, we're developing world-class deposits of industrial minerals uh, and then looking to vertically integrate and extract greater value from those feedstocks by producing high purity chemicals. And how we get there, our strategy is probably different from, uh, from most companies. Uh, what we try to do is uh, invest the least amount of capital uh, to develop these assets with big partners. What we tend to do is invest capital to build up the size of the pie, make the resource bigger, do the test work, get the approvals, and then bring in big companies to develop these into long life, uh, low cost assets, to develop them at scales that we couldn't do uh, as a junior. We've, first of all, I guess we, we focus on the commodity. We got into lithium in 2009. We got into titanium vanadium uh, in 2003. We were very, very confident in the long-term supply-demand thematic, uh, and we've invested consistently over a couple of cycles. So who are we today? We've developed uh, the world's second largest source of hard rock lithium production, Mount Marion in Western Australia. We produced about 18% of the world's lithium units last year. Uh, originally, we owned 100%. We bought in uh, Mineral Resources, who are Australia's largest contract processor of minerals to build the world's largest lithium concentrator at no cost to us. They got 30% equity for that. We then bought in uh, China's largest lithium producer or lithium converter uh, to take the offtake. We sold them equity, so we've all up. We've now signed an agreement to sell the balance of our uh, stake uh, and we will have yielded 200 million Australian dollars out of a $3 million investment. So what we've also retained is offtake from that mine. Uh, we've just completed a feed study for a lithium refinery. Unfortunately for all the lithium boys, the uh, prices came back 50% last year. We've come back 50%. Fortunately, we've got a lot of cash. What we're doing there is we've, we've put the lithium refinery on hold for a little while. We see, especially the spodumene going into oversupply. We think the next couple of years for lithium, it'll go into oversupply. And for mid next decade, there's gonna be a very, very large lithium shortage. Um, what we're focused on in the lithium business is the lithium ion battery recycling. We've got a pilot plant up at SGS in Canada, uh, essentially capturing that lithium back at the end of life. At the moment, only about 5% of the batteries are truly recycled. We've also got the Barambi Titanium Vanadium Project. It's the world's most advanced undeveloped vanadium deposit. Uh, it's, you know, we've invested $30 million over 15 years for that. Um, we're completing a dual compliant reserve and DFS We'll have that out in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, then a Canadian NI43-101 document uh, in, uh, in March. At the moment, we've got uh, about 40 million in cash and investments. That's pre-receipt of the sale proceeds, which we expect to close before the end of February. So, you know, the market is, uh, is not great. You know, if you're trading in with a market cap of 117 million, you've got 135 million in cash. We've got to be closer to the bottom uh, than ever before and good times ahead, hopefully. So, you know, for vanadium, um, why we like vanadium is every time there was a little supply shock, the price has shot up. Uh, it's in balance. Uh, vanadium production worldwide has actually been declining. Uh, not sure what all those graphs are, but look, there is a, there's a big demand shortage, sorry, there's a big supply shortage emerging uh, over the next couple of years. That's come from uh, China legislating that you can't water quench to uh, increase the strength of your steel. That's growing at reasonable rates. That last shock is, uh, is increasing price um, and uh, there's increasing demand from aerospace alloys and particularly the energy storage sector. You know, the VRBs are growing at about 15% per annum. A little bit like lithium when we first got in there, you know, the traditional uses were sort of half traditional uses, half battery. And then once, the, you know, the, we see this as very akin to the early stage of the lithium battery world. So here's a little fly through of Barambi. It's, uh, it's located about 500 kilometres west, uh, sorry, east of Geraldton uh, in the midwest of WA. Uh, it's a massive VTM deposit. We've got about 280 million tonnes of resource. Uh, we've got about 30 odd million tonnes of contained TI2 and a million tonnes of contained V205 down to a depth of about 60, oh, actually probably 70 odd vertical metres. 
Uh, we've done about 1,100 metres there. We've drilled this thing down to 350 metres. It's a late intrusion. It goes down four kilometres. It's truly one of the world's largest VTM deposits. Now, we completed a feasibility in 2009. We've had that reviewed, so we were able to republish some of the results last year. We've got a new DFS uh, dual compliant 2012 coming out in a couple of weeks. So we'll produce about 5 or 6% of the world's vanadium. It'll be lowest quartile cost. I think we're probably third or fourth lowest. The mine life originally was about 12 years using a vanadium price of 30 bucks. It's currently 80 bucks. Uh, large capex, but you know, with the lithium deposit, we got a big contractor to build a $300 million concentrating plant there to take some of the capex. We'll look at doing the same way. Uh, we've got plenty of cash and we're very comfortable with those economics that will attract the prerequisite debt. And look, you know, being down on the bottom of the cost curve is the only defendable sort of long term position on that. Um, and the prices last year we saw spike to about 130 bucks, they're currently sitting at around 80. In terms of the timeline, um, you know, we're fortunate in that we've actually got granted mining leases, received uh, our environmental approvals. We're now just finishing those studies. Uh, we'll commence a feed study and, and run an offtake and partner in parallel. Getting back to the lithium uh, business, you know, we pursued an integrated strategy. We weren't actually all that worried about owning the lithium mines. The, most of the guys that made the money are actually making the lithium chemicals. Uh, hence why we retain the offtake and then capturing that uh, lithium back at the end of the life uh, is paramount for us. Um, so there's details of the Mount Marion equity sale, we're not going to pay any tax on the, uh, on the consideration and we retain enough offtake to, to operate to run about 80% uh, of the capacity for our lithium refinery. And so this is one of the reasons, uh, you know, while we took a bit of a pause in the lithium business, uh, essentially, Australia is going to double last year's spodumene production capacity. So last year we produced about 1.5 million tonnes. We've got two 750,000 tonne uh, plants being built uh, and a couple of other ones are being commissioned. You know, I won't say lithium's a cartel, but it's certainly a functioning oligopoly. There's four big companies. The brine boys are in hard rocks. The hard rock guys are going into brines. Um, you know, you really can only really play on the fringes. So that's the, uh, the design of the plant uh, that we wanted to build about 40 kilometres from the mine, Mount Marion. It's just outside of Kalgoorlie, which is Australia's mining capital. And, uh, and this is what uh, our operational focus is on the lithium business at the moment, and that's uh, running the pilot plant for the lithium ion battery recycling. You would have heard the panel up there, you know, everyone's sort of saying, well, we're going to end up going to 811. If we go to 811 for every tonne of lithium that I get at the back end of this plant, I'll get a tonne of nickel metal and about 150 kilos of cobalt. What that'll do is actually enable me to recover my lithium unit and then the, uh, the credits will, will push me right down the bottom of the cost curve. Um, so look, you know, incredibly robust, looking at producing cobalt for about five bucks a pound in our previous study. Uh, increasing that scale from 10 to 50 tonnes, we expect a material decline in the cost of the cobalt. So I guess, you know, in terms of company highlights, um, we've got a great board, uh, we've got uh, great staff, we've got a great balance sheet, and most importantly, we've got, you know, secure uh, supplies of feedstocks in sort of globally relevant commodities going forward. We've got a clear path uh, to grow our business and to grow our margin. And, you know, we've de-risked the developments. What we've essentially done, you know, is bring in those big multi-billion dollar companies. You know, what it does is enables us to bring forward our cash flows and give them back to the shareholders. The management's the largest shareholder in the business. Um, and also, you know, the commodities that uh, we produce means that I can comfortably talk about them with my children. Thank you.